my keys, the keys, las llaves de la casa, my keys to that, to the house, my keys, my house keys. I'm looking for my house keys. No, no. Where are my keys? No. I'm looking for my keys, but uh, but um, me da la impresión. I think I'm looking for my keys in the wrong place. This is the wrong place. This is the wrong place. This is the wrong place for my keys. Where are my keys? And this is the wrong place. I'm looking for my keys in the wrong place. Where are my keys? Huh? In my pocket? Uh, my keys are in my pocket. Yeah, in the right place, not in the wrong place. Hola y bienvenidos a la clase número 43 del nivel básico. Tenemos una frase muy, muy interesante hoy. Es, he's looking for his house keys in the wrong place. Él está buscando las llaves de su casa en el lugar equivocado. Ok, vamos a centrarnos en esta primera parte. He is looking for, contraído, he's looking for. To look for significa buscar. Es un phrasal verb, un verbo compuesto. To look es mirar. Look for, buscar. Te voy a poner más ejemplos. Uh, he's looking for the book. Él está buscando el libro. Ok. Entonces, ¿cómo se dice? Ella está buscando el, la silla, por ejemplo. Ok. She's looking for the chair. She's looking for the chair. Ok. Estoy buscando el bolígrafo. I'm looking for the pen. I'm looking for the pen. Ok, so, nuestro um, phrasal verb, to look for. Hi, Barbara. Que se vea Mr. Pilgrim? Hmm. Yes, I can see Mr. Pilgrim. What's he doing? He's looking for his desk. Yeah, he's looking for his desk. Que rarito es. He's looking for his desk. He is. <laughs> He is looking for his desk, okay? No, he's. Y está buscando, entonces, he's looking for his desk. A ver tú. That's right, very good. ¿Y ahora? ¿Qué, qué está haciendo ahora? Hmm. Now he's looking for his chair. I can't believe it. Yeah, he's looking for his chair. And now I think he's looking for his folders. Este hombre está loco, ¿no? Yes. And now he's looking for. Está buscando. He's looking for. His. No veo nada. I can't believe it. Ok, ya hemos visto nuestro primer phrasal verb del curso: to look for. To look for, que significa buscar. Okay, ahora vamos a ver his house keys, las llaves de su casa. Keys, fíjate en la pronunciación, no decimos keys, es keys, con un sonido de, de la I latina muy larga, keys. He's looking for his house keys, his house keys, llaves de su casa, ¿ya? Yeah? I'm looking for my house keys, I'm looking for, estoy buscando... Las llaves de mi casa. Estoy buscándolo. Ah, ahí están. Yeah? So I'm looking for, or oh, I was looking for, my house keys. Okay. ¿Cómo se dice en inglés? Ella está buscando sus llaves de casa. Okay. She's looking for her house keys. Her house keys. Okay. Y él está buscando sus, sus llaves de, de, de su casa. Las llaves de su casa. De su casa. Ok, he's looking for his house keys. Y nuestra palabra del día es brush. Brush, cepillo. Brush. Fantástico. Muy bien. <coughs> Michelle, 
¿Huh? Eh, parece que he perdido mis llaves de casa. Yeah. I've lost my house keys. And, oh, can you help me? ¿Me echas una mano? Uh, can you help me look for them? Tengo que buscarlos. Your house keys? My house keys, yeah. May maybe they're in your bag, en tu bolso. Oh. Yeah, yeah, check, check. Okay. Okay, fijaos, no he dicho the keys of my house, sino my house keys. Y no he dicho house, no. Es mucho más suave, como te he dicho mil veces. House Keys. Y no keys, ni keys, ni nada. Keys. ¿Ok? All right. Uh, any, uh, no, I no. don't have your house keys. Sorry. Um, well, um, check in your pocket. En tu bolsillo. Maybe, maybe they're in your pocket. Mm. Mm. No, I don't have your house keys. Uh, the other side of the table. Uh, um. Maybe by the computer? No, I huh? don't have your house keys. Where, where are my house keys? I, I don't know. Sorry, one second. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Hi. No, I can't. No, I'm helping him to find his house keys. I'm helping Mr. Strong to find his house keys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Okay, vamos a terminar la clase de hoy gone in the wrong place. Okay, so he's looking for his house keys in the wrong place. Él está buscando las llaves de su casa en el lugar equivocado, in the wrong place. Okay, y lo, lo opuesto sería eh, el lugar correcto, the right place. Okay, some examples. This pen, this pen is in the wrong place. It should be, debería estar aquí, yeah? It's in the wrong place. This pen is in the right place. It's in the right place. Está en el lugar, en el lugar correcto, yeah? Okay, ¿cómo se dice? Uh, mi coche está en el lugar equivocado. Entonces, en, 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 en inglés, a ver. Okay. My car is in the wrong place. It's in the wrong place. Um, ¿Su libro de ella está en el lugar equivocado? Her book is in the wrong place. Okay, her book is in the wrong place. ¿Y nuestros bolis están en el lugar equivocado? Our pens are in the wrong place. Our pens are in the wrong place. What a mess. A ver qué pone esto. Cleaner, these are in the place wrong. Human resources. Limpiadora, todo esto está en el sitio equivocado. Cleaner, these are in the place wrong. Place wrong no decimos. Hay que decir in the wrong place. Dilo conmigo. In the wrong place. In the wrong place. Eso es. Todo esto, this is all in the wrong place. Bueno, pues a limpiar. CDs, DJ Live for Use, CDs. Bueno, they're in the wrong place. A la basura, in the bin. A mobile, it's in the wrong place. In the bin. Scissors, they're in the wrong place. In the bin, and this too. And some keys. Paco was looking for his keys. He's looking in the wrong place. In the bin. Are you a difficult person? I hope not, because I have trouble dealing with difficult people. I have a lot of trouble, trouble, trouble dealing with. Difficult people deal with is tratar con gente, tratar con. Trouble, escrito trouble, es uh, problemas. Sin embargo, lo usamos igual que vosotros en castellano cuando decís me cuesta trabajo. Me cuesta trabajo tratar con gente como tú. I have trouble dealing with después de trouble, siempre. I have trouble dealing with you. I have trouble understanding Spanish. I have trouble speaking French. Me cuesta trabajo hablar bien francés. I have trouble getting up in the morning. Me cuesta levantarme. Me cuesta trabajo levantarme por la mañana. I have trouble convincing you to study more. To have trouble más gerundio. To have trouble going. To have trouble coming. To have trouble convincing. To have trouble reading. To have trouble working. Thank you.
Hello and welcome to today's class. Okay, let's take a look at today's sentence. Are you ready? All right, bien. She has trouble dealing with difficult people. A ella le cuesta tratar con la gente difícil. Okay, la primera parte es un verbo muy útil, muy coloquial. To have trouble, okay? Significa cuando te cuesta, o te cuesta hacer algo, te cuesta algo, okay? To have trouble. Por ejemplo, I have trouble at work. A mí me cuesta en el trabajo. He has trouble at school. A él le cuesta en el colegio o la escuela. I'm having trouble with my new schedule. A mí me, me está costando mi nuevo horario. So again, to have trouble. No decimos to cost o con el verbo cost, ¿ok? Aunque en español decimos me cuesta, a él le cuesta, etc. Ahora, más ing. Ojo aquí, después de este verbo y hay otro verbo, tiene que ser en forma de gerundio. Por ejemplo, she has trouble dealing with her boss. A ella le cuesta tratar con su jefe. I don't have any trouble working at night. A mí no me cuesta trabajar por la noche. Okay, so do you have trouble studying? ¿A ti te cuesta estudiar? So repeat, to have trouble. Hi, and welcome to the shop that sells everything you need when you need it. Today, I have a surprise for you. But first, a few questions. ¿Te cuesta limpiar la casa? Do you have trouble cleaning your house? That's right, do you have trouble cleaning your house? Fíjate, no digo, do you have trouble to clean? Lo que digo es, do you have trouble cleaning your house? That's right. ¿Te cuesta encontrar espacio para poner la aspiradora? Do you have trouble finding space for your vacuum cleaner? I have trouble getting it out. I have trouble putting it away, devolviéndola a su sitio. Well, I have trouble turning it on, encendiéndola. I have trouble turning it on. It's so complicated. But I have a surprise for you. It's the Mini Vacuum Cleaner 4000, and it's great. You'll never have trouble cleaning your house. You'll never have trouble finding space to put it. You'll never have trouble getting it out. You'll never have trouble putting it away. You won't have trouble turning it on. It's wonderful. Y como no pesa nada, you won't have any trouble carrying it home. Bueno, ya llegamos a la segunda parte de la frase de hoy. She has trouble dealing with difficult people. A ella le cuesta tratar con la gente difícil. Aquí el verbo es to deal with. Ojo, otra vez. To deal with. Significa tratar o tratar con. Ejemplos. I deal with them every day. Yo trato con ellos todos los días. Who do you usually deal with? ¿Con quién sueles tratar? He deals with the accountant. Él trata con el contable. So repeat, accountant, contable. Accountant, esta palabra le día. Accountant, bien. My secretary deals with a lot of problems. Mi secretaria trata con o trata a uh, muchos problemas. Okay? I deal with a lot of people. Yo trato con mucha gente. She has trouble dealing with her stress. A ella le cuesta tratar su estrés. Or she has trouble dealing with her boss. A ella le cuesta tratar con su jefe. So repeat, to deal with. No te olvides la preposición with, que es muy importante aquí. To deal with. Hi, it's Frank, the security guard. Well, today I'm dealing with a lot of things. Eso es. Estoy tratando con muchas cosas. I'm very busy. Well, let's take a look at what I have to deal with today. First thing I have to deal with. Well, I have to deal with the guests at reception. Yeah, today, I have to deal with the guests at reception. I know, it's ridiculous. Second, I have to deal with, I have to deal with the parking in the parking garage. Yeah, the cars, it's a mess, it's crazy. I have to deal with, the cars in the parking garage. But no, 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 I'm not finished. No, I also have to deal with una fuga in el baño. I have to deal with a leak in the bathroom. Oh man, I told you, I have to deal with a lot of things. Ya os lo dije. Okay, so also, I have to deal with 
the grammar point. That's right, I have to deal with, tratar con. I have to deal with today's grammar point. All right, so let me deal with my problems. I'll see you soon. Yeah. Bueno, ya hemos llegado a la última parte de la frase de hoy. She has trouble dealing with difficult people. A ella le cuesta tratar con la gente difícil. Bueno, la última parte es difficult people. Ok, la gente difícil. Empezamos con difficult. Nunca decimos difficult. Ok, esa U suena como si fuera A, right? Difficult. Repeat. Difficult. Otra vez más. Difficult. Ok, ahora sí. Y después people. Difficult people. Por ejemplo, difficult people are everywhere. Es verdad. La gente difícil está por todas partes. He deals with difficult people all the time. Él trata con la gente difícil todo el tiempo. Do you deal with difficult people? ¿Tú tratas con la gente difícil? Is it easy for you to deal with difficult people? ¿Es fácil para ti uh, tratar con la gente difícil? Or do you have trouble dealing with difficult people? Or ¿te cuesta tratar con la gente difícil? So, she has trouble dealing, ING, dealing with difficult people. Recuerda, difficult. Again. Hello, Steve speaking. How can I help? No, I'm sorry. There's no discounts in the park today. No. I'm sorry. That's life. Yeah, bye bye now. Gente difícil. Difficult people. This park is full of difficult people. And if they're not in the park, they're on the phone, being difficult. Because that's what difficult people do. Be difficult! <sighs> that's right, difficult people. La gente difícil is difficult people. Like him. Por lo menos, yo sé tratar con la gente difícil. I know how to deal with difficult people. Sarah, the shopkeeper, she has trouble dealing with difficult people. But me, it's part of the job. Please leave your message after the tone. Beep. Hello, hey. You like my shirt? It's expensive, right? It's one of the best shirts. Obviously, uh, I'm trying to make a good impression. Obviamente, es evidente. Obviously, I'm trying to make a good impression. I'm showing off. Estoy presumiendo un poco de, de camisa también. That guitar, can you see it? It's a very expensive guitar. It's one of the best guitars in the world. Obviously, I want to make a good impression that I have the best of everything. The best microphone, the best. To make a good impression. Dicen en español, decís causar una buena impresión. En inglés, no causamos impresiones, hacemos impre impresiones. To make. And you can make a good impression or a bad impression. And remember, you never have a second chance to make a good first impression. But don't show off. Show off is presumir, fardar, osten, ser ostentoso. To show off. To show is mostrar, but to show off is hacerlo de forma ostentosa. Para ganar el aprecio. De la gente. Hi guys, welcome to another exciting advanced class. Let's go with today's sentence, which is the following. Lo siguiente, ¿eh? He wasn't showing off, but he was obviously trying to make a good impression. Esto en castellano significa pues que él no estaba presumiendo. Pero evidentemente estaba intentando crear una buena impresión. Okay, let's go and focus on the first part of the sentence. He wasn't showing off. El verbo to show off significa presumir. Okay. Um, y además puede ser un verbo transitivo o intransitivo. Es decir, que puedes, you can show off sin complemento. Or you can show something off. Okay. En este caso lo vemos como un verbo Intransitivo. He wasn't showing off. No estaba presumiendo. Okay? But you could show off your car. 
You could show off your new car. You could show off your new shirt. You could show off your new hairstyle. Hairstyle sería peinado, ¿ok? Y también el verbo show off nos da uh, lugar a un sustantivo relativo, que es a show off, que sería una persona mm, presumida, un presumido, ¿ok? He's a show off. He's always showing off. Hey, hey, how's it going? Oye, no es por presumir. I don't want to show off, but I had another date last night with Felicity. Yeah, she wanted some mic time. We got off to a great start. She loved my cooking. I'm not showing off, she did. She really loved my cooking. <sighs> ah, by the way, presumir is to show off. So I'm showing off, you're showing off, He's showing off. But in the end, you know, I was a bit disappointed. I told her, Felicity, you can touch my muscles if you want. She told me I was showing off. <sighs> she had the opportunity to touch these bad boys and she said I was showing off. Can you believe it? Well, the next time she asked me to go on a date, I'm gonna turn her down. She said I was showing off. Showing off. Obviously, 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 obviously. Bien, ya tenéis muy claro cómo pronunciamos nosotros la palabra obviously. Si alguien se atreve a decir obviously, pues no sé lo que haré con él, ¿vale? Bien, obviously es nuestra forma de decir ev evidentemente, que ya me sale con acento guiri total. No, evidentemente, obviously. Y vamos a verlo dentro de nuestra frase de hoy. He wasn't showing off, no estaba presumiendo él. But he was obviously trying to bla bla bla. Bien, fijaros dónde colocamos también, obviously, después del verbo to be. He was obviously trying to lo que sea. Era evidentemente, o evidentemente, estaba intentando hacer algo, ¿ok? Obviously. La B es muy fuerte, pero el problema aquí con la pronunciación, y por eso es tan importante hacer un poco de, de meditación ahí, cantándolo, es que tenemos la B seguida, enseguida, por una V, de las nuestras. Obviously. Obviously. Es, 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 ¿ok? No es obviously. ¿De acuerdo? Muy bien. Hmm, I think I might take the day off today. I mean, after all, it is my birthday. But obviously, no one here remembered, because obviously, no one here remembers anything. In fact, I'm going to send them an email. Oh, George, obviously, you need to take the garbage out before the garbage men leave. Margaret, obviously, you need to clean all the rooms and throw out the fruit in my office, because obviously, it's going off. And Felicity will obvious. Are you saying obviously with me every time I say obviously? Repeat after me. Obviously. Obviously. I ah, see, you got it. What was I saying? Ah, Felicity. Well, obviously, Felicity's gonna do whatever she wants. And, well, hmm, Mike. Mike will obviously be showing off. Oh. This morning, he wasn't actually showing off, but he was obviously flirting with. Somebody. I obviously can't take the day off. Welcome back. He wasn't showing off. No estaba presumiendo. But he was obviously trying to... Well, what was he obviously trying to do? Vamos a verlo. He was obviously trying to make a good impression. Sí, señores. Aquí nosotros en inglés decimos hacer una buena impresión. No to cause, no causar, literalmente, okay? He was trying to make a good impression. This reminds me of uh, an advert I saw, an advert, this was an anuncio, a few years ago, um, for an anti-dandruff shampoo. Dandruff, por cierto, es nuestra palabra del día, ¿vale? Dandruff significa caspa, anti-dandruff, anti-caspa, ¿vale? Dandruff se escribe D-A-N-D-R-U-F-F, -F, y se pronuncia dandruff. Bajando un poco la mandíbula. Bien. He was trying to make a good impression. So if you, if you have dandruff and you want to make a good impression, you need to use anti-dandruff shampoo. Or, 
like me, I'm trying to make a good impression on you, just wear a white shirt. Así no se nota. ¿Eh? Vale, vamos a ver la frase entera. He wasn't showing off. No estaba presumiendo. El verbo to show off. Presumir, ya lo sabéis. But he was obviously, con esa B y V juntas, ¿eh? he was obviously trying to make a good impression. Muy bien. See you soon. Oh, oh, hello there, my darlings. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit stressed today because la Duquesa de Villa Vieja is here in the hotel. Oh, you know, Wayne has made a very good impression on her. Mm-hmm. I don't know how, but he's made a very good impression on her. Now, you at home, do you want to make a good impression on me? Well, asegúrate de no decir cause a good impression ni cause a good impression. Es to make a good impression on someone. Now, I don't think the Duchess was very impressed with our hotel. The hotel didn't make a very good impression on her. But Wayne did. He was waiting for her with wine. He wasn't showing off, but he was trying to make a good impression. She'll break his heart. 